it became clear very early on that there wasn't going to be just seven put to death. About two dozen of them handed themselves in or were captured very early on. And this was what they faced, this terrible, gruesome, very medieval way of being put to death, uh, being hanged, drawn, and quartered. And there's no easy way of sort of skipping through this because it is highly symbolic what, they, what happened to them. They were dragged through the street on a sledge and then hanged by the neck until they were unconscious but still alive, cut down, woken up, and then I'm afraid, we'll, we'll go quickly through this, but it's not a very easy process, um, they were castrated. And this was symbolic of the fact that they were, it was the end of their seed, effectively. All of their property was confiscated. Uh, then, it gets even grislier, while they were still alive, they were disemboweled, and their guts were burnt in front of them. And this was thought, actually, bizarrely, to be some sort of favor, because in the medieval mind, and I stress this was a medieval punishment that just happened to have survived, it was believed that your most evil presence was in your gut. And by purifying it with the flame, it gave you a chance of some reconciliation in the final judgment when you got to the other side. And then eventually you would die either of blood loss or shock, at which point your head was chopped off and put on a spike to overlook the place of your crime forever. And then, borrowing a phrase from Mary Berry, your body was parboiled and then chopped into four and sent to different parts of the kingdom as what I imagine was a very effective deterrent. And the first man to suffer this exquisitely unpleasant ending was another one of these immensely interesting characters who seem to have collided at this moment of English history. He's called Colonel, or Major General actually, Thomas Harrison. And Harrison was, again, rather a conflicted person. He was a very devout man of God, but also a great dandy. And his crime in the eyes of the royalists was threefold. One, he came from this deeply suspect religious sect called the Fifth Monarchists. They believed there had been four failed empires of man, Babylonian, Persian, Roman, and Greek. But the fifth monarchy, the one that would really count, was that of God in his second coming. And they sincerely believed that this was round the corner. Uh, they knew from studying the books of Revelation and, uh, and of Daniel that this would happen very imminently in 1666. And it was their duty to tidy up the world and make it a, a place more worthy of God's presence. So, crackpot religion, but also, on top of that, he, had, he was known to have been a war criminal. People had seen him shoot uh, in cold blood royalist prisoners uh, after they had surrendered. And then his real crime, and we're going back to how nobly Charles I died, he had instantly taken on this mantle because of his pious uh, and humble suffering at the end of being a saint and martyr. He was known to have been very unpleasant to Charles towards the end. He had escorted him from near the Isle of Wight up to Windsor on his final trek to London and his trial, and this was unforgivable. 